agenda today for you here. So we've got some notices from Alison first. Um, Liz is going to just talk briefly about the government's latest call for evidence, which people can chip into. Uh, then our main topic today is from Adrian Kelly at Nottingham City Council, who will be talking about their Future Parks Accelerator program. Um, we did have Paul Rabbits on the agenda at three o'clock. Unfortunately, Paul's off sick at the moment, um, so we're going to miss that out today. I'm sure we'll get an update on the Parks Management Forum, soon to be association, I think, next time. Uh, we'll have a short break then, and then the second half will be the, our usual roundtable opportunity for discussion on kind of hot topics and what's going on around the region uh, before we hear the latest from Chris on his uh, inside stories in what's going on in government and the parks world, hopefully. So, uh, Alison, over to you just on the notices. Thanks, James. Um, yeah, just thank you to everyone who subscribed this year's membership. Um, we've got a few new members there, Mansfield Council and the Renewal Trust. Um, there's a few just still outstanding that people are uh, just encouraged to get their subscription forms and purchase orders through, but um, most have now renewed, so that's great. Um, yeah, our next webinar is um, on the 22nd of July. Um, we will incorporate um, some learning and some presentations with our annual report. Um, so we've concluded our first year as a, um, a registered charity, which is great. Uh, this week's actually Small Charities Week. So again, just thank you to everyone who volunteers for this forum. Um, work behind the scenes, work on the board, volunteering at events um, and webinars, getting presentations ready. We couldn't do it without you because we are very, very small, but it's, it's great that our charity now covers the whole East and West. So at that, that um, that'll be a year in re review on the 22nd of July um, with an AGM, um, hear about our a lottery project um, which is now completed um, so the work that we've done for that um, some of the evaluation information um, and we've been successful in getting another couple of um, grants through for to take us forward into next year so we'll share information on that um, and hopefully get another couple of presentations together as well Okay, thanks, Alison. And then a couple more dates of the diary as well, upcoming things yeah. later on in the summer. That's right. So um, this is quite exciting. Our first outdoor trip of the year <laughs> um, will be to Solihull. Um, they've done a huge um, naturalistic landscaping project. Um, so all the information on that is in the um, newsletter, which has gone out to everyone. Um, but I'm just going to put the link in the chat there um, for you to book your place. Um, if you can book via Eventbrite, then we, we're clear on everyone who will be attending. So it will be a tour, a walking tour of about 40 minutes, but lots of stops along the way. Um, landscape architects will be on site and the ecologist to talk about what they've done, how they achieved it. And we'll be publishing a full case study on that as well, how they got the funding, um, the outcomes for the community um because they've linked lots of landscapes together walking routes cycling routes parks um etc so that'll be a really interesting visit um and then in next month's webinar and in the newsletter we'll release all the information about our green heritage conference so we're just planning that for september um and um we'll give you full information on booking on our sponsorship um, and the sort of the content. So we've been working behind the scenes. We've got key, spon key sponsors and um, key speakers lined up. Um, so Green Flag, English Heritage, um, National Lottery, MHCLG will all be um, at the conference. So we're really excited about that. And fingers crossed, no COVID restrictions by then. Thanks, James. Great. And finally, and finally, please, please give us evaluation of today's um, webinar. It's really helpful for us to gather data about what you find of interest, what you want to share with each other, um, types of topics that we can cover in the future. I'll put that link in the chat as well in a few minutes. So thank you all. 
Yeah, and I think that's a good point, is Alison. You know, we're here to try and help the, the the network across the region as a whole. So do feedback either through that evaluation or direct to one of us or Alison if you there's certain topics you want picked up in the future, or even like we sometimes do in between webinars, if there's a hot topic you want feedback from the region on, we can email that round. So so do please yeah talk to us. I think that's what I'd say. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, so first of all, as I mentioned, Liz, um, over to you on the latest government call for evidence. Yes, we've been made aware of um, an inquiry um, that is being um, developed by the COVID-19 committee, which I think is the House of Lords committee. Um, it's looking at the long term impact of the pandemic on the UK's towns and cities, but also includes green spaces. So that's really important. And they want to hear from um, larger towns and cities outside the 12 core cities. So they've already presumably had some evidence from the 12 core cities, but they um, want some evidence from other places as well. So ourselves, the Midlands Parks Forum, want to put something together collectively but um, like with the call for evidence uh, around the parks inquiry, I think it's useful to have our voices heard. Um, so if anybody is keen to put something together um, for that call for evidence, there is a deadline of the end of this month. So the 30th of June, the sorts of things that they're looking at, particularly is around inequalities um, and how the pandemic has affected inequalities in terms of access to green space. So those are the key things that they're looking at. Um, Alison has provided a link to um, the call for evidence, so she'll put that in the chat for us. Um, there's also going to be um, some evidence which is going to be submitted verbally, apparently on the 22nd of June. So if you use the link, you can get through to um, the call for evidence, but find out about that 22nd of June um, evidence submission as well, um, which will probably be more around the sort of towns and cities aspect rather than the green spaces aspect but we do want to try and get as many submissions from possible from green spaces people as i say to make our case so um that's it about the call for evidence great thank, thank you, you liz okay so yeah do get in touch with us if you want to support that and be part of the sort of collective voice back on that one uh, so uh, as i mentioned earlier our main speaker today is adrian kelly from nottingham city council um, and Adrian's going to be talking to us about the city's FPA programme, which is one of eight across the country. So, Adrian, over to you. Um, obviously, I've got the slides, so just give me a, a shout when you want me to move on. OK, thanks, James. The, uh, there. Um, hello, as um, James said, my name's Adrian Kelly. I'm the programme manager of the Future Parks Accelerator programme for Nottingham. Um, we're one of eight cohorts across the city, uh, across the country. Well, there's one in Edinburgh um, and then in the Midlands, there's ourselves in Birmingham. Um, and uh, the if, next slide, James. And the main purpose of um, our programmes are to look at how we can make our parks sustainable for the future um, in, a, in an accelerated way. So the funding is to... Uh, help us really focus on on doing that piece of work um, and, and not particularly our day jobs at this moment in time. Um, the the programme was actually due to finish um, 31st of May, um, but it's been extended until March next year uh, for a variety of reasons, um, COVID being um, definitely one of them. Um, and um, we've just been through quite a stringent um, midpoint review uh, period um, where we're looking at kind of what where we are in our project what we're actually trying to achieve and how we're going to get there so what I'll do is just take you through some of those uh, some of those things today so when we started we had four main areas of focus um, which will um, culminate in the writing of a we say 25 year strategy but a, a, a long-term strategy uh, for the city um, looking at um, commercial growth public engagement, volunteering, and um, some charitable um, type of uh, approach as well. Um, next slide, James. So um, to start off with, we the first theme, volunteering, um, 
we did a gap analysis, tried to understand what we were doing at the moment, what other people in the city were doing, what other people up and down the country were doing, to try and establish what it was that, that we wanted to uh, achieve uh, in Nottingham moving forward. Um, we're at the point now where um, Sandra was uh, was introduced earlier. Uh, Sandra has been brought on as the volunteer um, coordinator and tree coordinator for the city. Um, and uh, we'll be working with um, Sandra and Fliss to um, develop a, a, a strategy that takes us forward and make sure that the volunteer theme for the for the project goes from strength to strength so to do that we'll have a volunteer strategy um, we want to um, develop the corporate volunteer offer uh, we want to provide um, some actions for um, for continued growth up that will go through our 25 year strategy um, we want to work with partners to link to other opportunities um, across the city and work with um, Nottingham Open Spaces Forum as well to, to join with um, the volunteering that our friends of groups, et cetera, are already doing. Um, we're also looking at developing, um, we, we've uh, established a, a CRM system, a new volunteer system for the whole volunteering, uh, which already uh, libraries and museums have joined up with as well um, to coordinate our volunteer offer across the city and that helps us monitor and sign people up and understand what people are doing what people want to do etc um, and we want to kind of understand what training and uh, developing we need to do with our staff to help them um, understand the volunteer offer and to help partner with, with volunteers that come along to help in the city um, and the other thing that we're doing is developing a sponsorship offer to try and um, get the, the whole volunteer uh, package for the city sponsored um, for the next few years. Um, and we're, we're busy developing that at the moment. Next slide, James. Um, some An example of some of the um, pilots and, and programmes that we're, we're doing or look, looking to do. Uh, Forest Community Gardens, which is on forest recreation sites, we're working with the Green Social Prescribing Partnership, um, who will be working with park rangers, um, looking at um, uh, information sessions around food and diet, um, etc., around the community garden that's at the forest. Uh, and that will be a closed session um, that people are not referred to, but introduced to um, from the Green Social Prescribing um, part of the program. Uh, we're also looking at a, a range of program with the Wildlife Trust, Nottingham Wildlife, Wildlife Trust, um, looking at um, where they um, supply and manage the uh, volunteers, um, but they work with, um, uh, um, they, they will recruit the volunteer leaders um, and uh, rangers um, and, and organize them to work in, in our city parks, etc. Um, we've launched a small grant fund. We're just at the point where um, grant monies are being given to some local groups to help them with some small bits of um, tools or um, things that they need just to deliver their sessions better. Um, and as I say, we're at the point now where we're actually give, giving out some of those grant monies. And we're also working with Skill Mill to provide work experience opportunities um, on specific projects. And one of the ones we're looking at is our nursery at Woodthorpe Grange um, and doing a partnership programme with them. Next slide, James, please. Um, as part of the programme, we've also done some consultation and public engage engagement. This is probably the area that was hardest hit by COVID because we had to, to stop our big summer events programme that we, we had planned last year. Uh, we're going out again this year and um, going uh, over the summer into our parks, but also into places where um, there are non-traditional places to try and understand why people don't use our parks. So we have quite a lot of information about what people like in our parks and what they do when they get there. And we also want to understand why people, some people don't use our parks and try and understand what the issues there are. So we'll be focusing on that um, this summer. Um, and there'll be some deep dives with particular community groups to try and widen the demographic of um, the work that we've done. The um, information coming back uh, has come from quite a specific 
um, demographic in the city and we want to widen that and get more information from from other groups uh, so we're going to do some specific work with some community groups to um, find out kind of their opinions on parks and what they like what they don't like um, we also are um, developing some workshops to do with to do to do with our public realm team um, to explore the the so what and, and what next that's come from the the consultation that we've already done um, and to understand um, how we can grow the green agenda in the city and, and get more people into our parks and enjoying our parks and volunteering in our parks. Um, and we're also um, looking at doing an information campaign. We've had two interns that have done some great work with social media, etc., cetera, um, over the past few months. And we want to look at how we can widen that and get some more information out to, to our, our residents to, to get them involved more uh, in our parks. Um, next slide, James. We're also looking at um, a pilot project to, to better connect the city. So as part of the consultation, what's come out is it's quite difficult sometimes for people to get across to particular um, sites or get through the city. Um, and so we're looking at a pilot project with the Green Social Prescribing uh, team and the Renewal Trust um, to link up um, a park um where uh um at the top uh and then the uh allotments that um the renewal trust manage um and then a park at the bottom and at the moment you have to go all the way around either one way or the other which is quite um a long way but look up opening up and being able to take people through the parks through the allotments um through the park at the bottom and then um, along Robin uh, Robin Hood Chase uh, into the city. So there'll be a green route from one of our north areas right down into the city centre. So that again helps with um, active travel and um, uh, people who want to kind of um, walk into town or, or, or get more exercise just generally. Next slide, James. As I say, we're doing quite a lot of work with um, public health uh, and we're working, um, as I say, we, we're a green social prescribing um, cohort as well. Um, and again, we're looking at ways that we can um, in introduce different and um, more innovative ways for people to come and use our green spaces, uh, be it for recreation, be it for health, be it for um, sport or you know for whatever reason um, and we're also working with public health and the active together travel team um, to also look at how we can connect our city better together um, and as I say one of the one of the things that has come out of our consultation is how we can people how we can connect our city better get people from small local parks to neighborhood parks etc cetera, etc cetera, so that people have a wider choice of activity um, to do in their local areas next slide james um, so what we're trying to do um, with our consultation and engagement is to look at the social and environmental justice are areas of our approach to where our parks are and how people access them. Um, we're looking to understand a little bit more about people who don't use our parks to try and understand what we need to do to, to get people um, uh, enjoying our parks better. Um, we want to uh, improve our communication and, and get better at uh, planning longitudinal consultation so that we once we've started this process that we can keep it going and keep it moving forward. Um, and we want to um, develop um, other ways of um, being creative. So for some of the work we've done, we've done in schools, we've been to primary parliament, we took a bench out with us that people could sign whilst they were sitting talking to us. So we want to have a process of, of doing some, some types of consultation um, annually to keep understanding um, you know, what's, what people are enjoying or not enjoying or feel are missing from our parks. Um, and we also want it to help focus our strategy work, showing the, the what in terms of um, what the change factors or the changes that we need in our parks to, as I say, encourage more people into them. Next slide, please, James. Um, the charitable opportunity that we're looking at, we're um, collaborating with Nottingham Spaces Forum 
um, and um, they are a voluntary organisation at the moment um, and we're looking to help them get some more resource um, to cover um, some admin tasks and um, some fundraising tasks. They've got a, a couple of really good projects that they want to get off, um, off the ground. Uh, and so um, we've helped them with uh, a submission for green recovery funding, uh, which we hope we'll hear very soon um, has been successful. Um, but that will help them kind of with their organisational growth and help them to plan for the future um, to help us with, um, uh, uh, again, um, volunteer opportunities that we can um, that was happening there. Um, volunteer opportunities, etc. in the city. Thanks, James. Um, we're also exploring, uh, we have a trust in the city, Highfields Trust, that was um, uh, uh, put into trust from Jesse Boot many, many years ago. Um, of, um, uh, and it is at the moment just for Highfields Trust, and we're looking at widening that um, to include, uh, in the first instance, Victoria Embankment and Woodthorpe Park. Um, and we want to use that as um, a, a kind of foundation or fundraising arm for, for us to uh, develop those sites. Um, we've um, just started getting some uh, legal information as to uh, what the opportunity is there. And we want to use the, the trust as a, a way of developing some inward investment into, into particular sites in the first instance, just to, um, to help us with our charitable giving opportunities. Uh, and then we're also looking at some general sponsorship opportunities um, around um, things like roundabouts and the, the, um, that we do already, but also um, a bit further afield and doing some, some other um, sponsorship things like our tree planting programmes and things like that. Um, next slide, please, James. Um, as part of the work, we've also done quite a lot of mapping of um, our resources. We're just getting to the, the end of, of that process in terms of the quality and value audit um, and trying to kind of understand what it's telling us and, uh, again, um, what we need to do to move forward uh, with, with that piece of work. So there'll be some more mapping work and, um, and some um, sessions around understanding what, what the audit is telling us and what we need to do um, to uh, make sure that our parks remain a, a good quality um, and accessible. Uh, we're also um, looking at some biodiversity opportunity mapping and some uh, tree canopy mapping, which is being done over this summer. Uh, and we've also, um, along with a company called Vivid Economics, got a natural capital account for the city undertaken. Um, it's been done on a, a national level, but it does give an, an idea of kind of what the value of our parks are in, in monetary value. Next slide, please, James. As I say, we're doing some tree canopy mapping uh, and linking that with the biodiversity opportunity mapping. Um, we are uh, creating some um, interactive canopy maps and um, we're looking at how we can um, uh, plant those 50,000 trees that we have as a target, um, but also kind of understand how we need to uh, look after our trees um, and make sure that um, over the next, well, strategy 25 years, but forever, um, that our urban um, trees, the, the, they grow and they develop and they thrive in, um, in today's climates. Um, we're also looking to provide uh, an eco inventory map and also identification of resilient species. So again, with climate change, et cetera, understanding what the best trees to plant at particular times are and in particular places. So um, having some work done around all of that. Um, next slide, please, James. Has it moved? No, is it stuck? It's moved for me. Oh, it hasn't for me. It's moved for me as well. <laughs> I'm still on the tree one. <laughs> there we go. Let me go back for me. and go forward again. We're on sustainable funding streams, green benefits now. Oh, it's just moved. Yeah. 
Um, the other part of the work that we're doing is trying to understand how we can help our parks be um, more sustainable with um, the continuing austerity that happens in local authorities and with um, lots of other funding issues um, appearing around climate change and around um, keeping up developments in our parks. And, and, uh, and what we're trying to do is look at um, uh, some different ways of, of bringing income into the, into the service. Uh, so we've done a lot of work around trying to understand um, blue-green bonds, community municipal bonds, um, etc. Um, and we're working across um, other services uh, to try and understand what would be a good fit for, for us. Um, and again, um, we've got a company called Finance Earth who are, who are helping us look um, at some of those options. Um, next slide, please. Um, so um, what we're doing is we're working with our energy team um, and we're looking at um, some kind of green benefit investment fund for the city. Um, and so we're looking at um, thing, including things around biodiversity, about uh, renewable energy consumption, um, also some of the social, physical and mental well-being things through nature connectedness. Uh, and then linking to also our development uh, opportunities um, and through climate resilience and uh, flood defence um, and sustainable uh, urban drainage, looking at uh, our housing, our developer contributions, um, things like green prescription, how they will affect kind of um, the um, how they're going to how public health are going to manage those processes moving forward, um, and again looking at uh, capacity building. Um, funds to continue to to do those things. The um, the the discussions around these are, are quite slow because it's such a kind of new field. Um, but um, as I, uh, as I say, we've got environmental um, finance or finance earth as they are now um, coming in to um, to help us um, build up a, a picture of what will be possible in terms of those green green benefits investments moving forward. And that's perhaps some something that. Uh, I can come back in the future and talk about a bit more when we know a bit more, hopefully. Next slide, James. Um, as part of um, the FPA, we, we did a, um, a parts challenge where the National Trust came and uh, spent a week with us and um, looked at our parks uh, and looked at um, um, some of the, you know, some of our key sites. And uh, we, from that, uh, had a company come in and do some um, commercial appraisal opportunity um, work uh, and uh, and they um, uh, tabled a report that we took to some of our key stakeholders. Um, next slide, James. So on that, we had five key sites identified for specific investment uh, and they're five of our kind of lar larger sites um, and all of them, um, the suggestions for them are all slightly different. So some of them around um, for example, Colic is a you know a visitor education centre. Um, Victoria Embankment is about the uh, event offer on um, uh, a very big site in the in just outside the centre of the city that a lot of events are held at and improving the infrastructures there uh, and maybe a water feature. Uh, feature. Um, Ball Hall is around um, improving the park and the offer in the park. It's it's a country park that it has an 18 hole golf course, but it's it, it's uh, and some football pitches and it has some fishing lakes, but it's, it's not been all brought together with a, um, a, a management plan that, that helps us develop the park um, and develop some of the activities in there. So maybe looking at other outdoor activities that can happen there, um, like Go Ape or um, you know, better walkways, orienteering, things like that. So, so the idea is is to look at um, those sites in more detail and look at uh, business cases and business plans uh, between now and the end of the program to develop those sites. Um, but there's also some general recommendations in the in the park around um, doing some quick wins, as it, as it were, um, which we'll we'll look at over the next year as well. Um, next slide, please, James. 
Um, as I say, um, one of the things that you know we know we need to do is uh, is to uh, bring some more inward investment in. So as I say, we've got the charitable arm that we're trying to develop. We've got the um, the uh, bond or green bond type issue that we're trying to develop, and then we want to try and get some increase our inward investment in some of these sites. Um, so again, we're we're looking at the leveling up funding options. Um, we're developing some commercial designs and business plans, and we're working with um, sustainable development projects to link our green space uh, projects with those. Next slide, please, James. Oh, next slide, please, James. <laughs> So in terms of our strategy and developing our strategy, we, we've um, we've got three key areas. Um, so there's the reshaping. So it's understanding that mixed economy. It's understanding um, our growth in commercial trust infrastructure growth. It's understanding um, our uh, sponsorship opportunities, um, and then uh, understanding organisationally um, where there may be changes, um, be it across the service but across the city council as well um, so that's kind of the reshaping element there's the activating which again is the the volunteering um, it's the improving um, participants and users to our sites um, delivering um, things with our partners so with active travel with health and well-being um, and generally um, looking at kind of some marketing and branding so we have our group volunteer strand is is now the green guardians and we we're branding that up and and using that as our brand moving for, forward and are there other opportunities to do that with other elements um and then the connecting um which i've talked about as well you know looking at um how we can um improve our ur urban greeting greening and rewilding um projects across the city um how we can deliver on our carbon neutral uh, targets um, and our green improve our green corridors uh, and working with active travel to understand how we can bring people through our parks rather than around our parks um, with our active travel uh, schemes things like that next slide james so what we're saying about our strategy in the main is that the, the breathing space which is the the predecessors to this was, was quite inward looking in terms of um, us getting our service up to scratch, improving our quality, um, ensuring that our accessibility and access were good, uh, and, and generally um, raising the level of our service. Whereas the, the, the strategy that we're moving to is more about working with other services and areas and having an influence on their strategies and, and being involved in the work that they're doing um, as a, a using green space as a solution to some of um, their issues. Um, and as I say, that partnership working is is um, is quite slow, um, but we are getting there with, with quite a few of our um, our teams across the city. Next slide, please, James. Um, so um, in terms of our strategy, we're looking at um, aligning our refreshed strategy with our council plan, uh, which is just being refreshed at the moment. So we're waiting for, for that to come out. Um, and then making sure that our strategy obviously aligns with that. Uh, and then we're looking to um, colour in the detail, as it were, um, with um, the master plans for the uh, investment sites. We're looking at um, uh, carrying on our evaluation with CFP consultants uh, to understand um, what we're doing well, how we're achieving what we need to achieve, um, and making sure that we, we're on track. Um, working with uh, both public health and other partners um, to make sure that, that what we do is in partnership and it's not silo working anymore. Um, it's something that's used in local authorities since I've been in local authorities, which is a long time now, over 20 years. You know, and this silo working is talked about, but, you know, uh, breaking it down is never easy. But we are making progress, in, especially in terms of, using green space as a solution to other people's strategies. And, and we hope to continue that and make sure that that's a, a thread throughout the strategy. Um, and we want to, um, uh, as I say, grow this mixed economy uh, approach um, and also um, 
market and roll out uh, the, the strategy um, so that uh, it's not something that sits on our shelves but is used um, by us and, and people across the city. Um, and the last slide, please, James. So again, our roadmap to change. We will have uh, a well-developed, restructured volunteering strategy. We'll have explored major and incremental co commercial change. Um, we'll have completed a programme of consultation and created pathways for connecting our city better. Um, we'll also have developed a sponsorship prospectus and tried various options for increasing income um, and ensure that cultural changes are embedded within our service and with our partners. And uh, we'll have secure pathways to influence the green benefits agenda uh, moving forwards. And all that will be included in our 2050 strategy with action plans, targets and KPIs. So I've kind of rattled through there. So, um, um, but it, you know, it's it's quite a an intense program, uh, and so um, uh, I'll take questions, obviously. Um, but um, if I hand it back to the chair to organise that. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Yeah, that was great. Good run through, like you say. There's a hell of a lot to cover there in um, 20 minutes or so. So <laughs> understandable to whip through. Um, so open to the floor to any questions if people want to raise their hands. Um, Lawrence, you put something in the chat about um, Section 106. Is that something you want to pick up on? Yeah, that's what I'd like to pick up on. Um, can you see me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I think we've all had the same problem. A lot of local authorities have, we're all, obviously a lot of land has been developed and we're seeing all these houses go up, but I think at the end of the day, we don't do not get enough 106 value out of that development, really, for parks and public open spaces. Really, we get a, we get a, a, an an amount, but is it enough? I don't think it is. I think we're underselling ourselves, and I know lots of hands are tied, but we've got to try and change that for future because you know, those housing developments are worth thousands and millions, and we, we're getting a, a pittance in return for for what we're giving up, really. And I think you know if we want to sure parks have got a future that 106 money is very important to um, ensure that really so that was my point really yeah i agree and i know i mean adrian might want to chip in but i know just before i left nottingham one of the things we did in the last couple of years was rewrote our um, open space spd with planning um and certainly whilst we came up with a formula at that point which generated more 106 than we had before there was very much an understanding that we couldn't push the envelope too far because of yeah. the impact, not the impact on, but the, you know, a, a awareness of what developers would say rather than a, let's go for broke on it. And that's probably the situation across the country, I'd imagine, is that so actually what is the right amount? Yeah, what is the right amount? Yeah, I think it would be an interesting uh, survey to find because, you know, once that land has changed, it's changed for good. But we need to you know, obviously we do get some money to perhaps put a mugger in or whatever else, but it's, it's not enough really. There's, there should be some probably longer term funding for a park for in that area for the next 10, 15 years. You know? And then certainly everyone's calculating it in different ways. It could be an, an interesting future piece of research perhaps across the region about yeah. methodologies and the amounts and stuff. So almost a benchmarking approach to it maybe. It's not going to stop. I think, you know, obviously there's a shortage of housing and the government's pushing, pushing it through at every opportunity. and. And we're obviously losing a lot more green spaces and you know, land assets. Um, we just there is a value to them, and I think we we shouldn't undersell them. Really. I think um, you know that, and that is that's a conversation with planners. And as James knows, it's it's very difficult um, yeah. sometimes those conversations yeah. because there there are differing. Um, uh you know kind of um forces involved but another thing that's coming um uh coming out at the moment is is this nature-based planning approach and um you know uh for example broad marsh in the city is um a big shopping um uh, center that w was they we sold but then the company went bust and so we are left with this ancient um, shopping centre and um, the city has to find something to to, yeah. to change yeah. it with and so um, they did some consultation and basically the will for that space to have a very very large green element um, is massive and yeah. so pressure is really being put on the city to make sure um, that that is incorporated in any development plans that come forward 
So it might not just be through 106, but it might be through the plans that developers have to put forward that they have to make a bigger um, green space yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a develop, um, contribution at that point as well. Yeah, yeah no, that's good. Thank you. Okay, uh, next question was from Alison, Adrian. Can you just explain what green bonds are for the, for the audience? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the, they're, they're kind of a new phenomenon. So crazy word to say um but um edinburgh and um uh, are looking at working with their energy industries uh, and um uh the uh the edinburgh forestry commission and and bringing them all together to understand um and it's 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 a sort of offsetting way but people um uh, buy a bond to kind of offset the um, energy that they're using or, or working in in that way um, and they're normally done on quite a large scale and the issue for Nottingham is um, you know the, we don't have the the perhaps the companies and the, that are based in Nottingham to be able to do one of those sufficiently but we're looking at maybe doing more of green investment bonds where again um, some of our CN28 targets looking at, at those and, and um, getting a bond together to say you know if you if you want to become carbon neutral then if you donate this to our green spaces so that we can do some real wilding or or whatever then that that will help um to generate and again you've got to be careful with the word offsetting as well because it's it's not always offsetting but you know if you want if you want to um put some green benefits to the city then you can you know donate some money and, and do these pieces of work etc okay that's Thank really you. interesting um, there's a question from Phil. So obviously there's something I was going to ask was about the kind of interrelationship and similarities between the different FBA projects with Birmingham also being one. Phil, do you, you've asked specifically about Greenkeeper at all and said that the Nottingham, um, how did the Nottingham Birmingham data compare? Do you want to just expand on that, Phil? Yeah, hi. Yeah, I mean, when we when we had looked at the data, they got the wrong park names on, they got the wrong park sizes. That It was very flawed. I mean, the principle, I guess, is very good. You know, it will give a, a, a value to the parks, but the, the data wasn't wasn't uh, it was it was significantly wrong. I just wondered if if uh, Nottingham Nottingham data was similar or it it was in a better state. Uh, not particularly. <laughs> um, uh, and as and James can uh, can concur with that but uh, the approach we're taking with it they took a very national approach um to doing the work so they took um information from the um the ons surveys and from some you know national mapping work that had been done so it it really isn't specific to nottingham in a sense and what they did was then kind of measure how much open green space we had and, and did it that way um so we very much used that with um with an overarching um viewpoint so um you know we're not we're not using it as definitive in any sense that this is how much our open and green space is worth in the city but we we're saying that you know the it, it shows that um that you know the the tree canopy um saves this amount of carbon because we have this many trees so we can take some kind of some general stats from it, but we're not using it as definitively. This is the value of our opening green space in Nottingham. Okay. No, it, it, it didn't look at the individual sites for anything. The, the no. data was wrong. No. Some sites have got big commercial opportunities. Some have got none at all, and it was it wasn't very good. So no, we had many a meeting with that, didn't we, James? <laughs> yeah, and I think, Phil, I think the problem probably is for all of us that we, I mean, certainly when, you know, I was part of Core Cities, we probably had quite high hopes for Greenkeeper, didn't we, and, and those tools, and they haven't quite been realised in the way I think we expected maybe, but whether there's more potential for it if you are willing to get your checkbook out or, or look at the data on a more local level, I don't know. No, so. uh, but no, but, but one way of checkbooks, all my checkbooks empty now. Sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think most local um, I think if you, sorry, I think if you look, Manchester have done quite a lot uh, more work on it. Um, so, um, and if you look on their um, sites, you'll be able to find some. Um, but they they did a study, a much more in depth study for their area. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you. Uh, and Phil, anything you just while you're on want to say about kind of how Birmingham FBA is going? Does it look similar to Nottingham? Are there, is there much overlap and much sharing of kind yeah, of yeah, workloads? I mean, yeah, I mean the um, 
the, the, the green here we mentioned the, the um the park uh the green champions that we, we've got the green champions uh movie commercial activities that we're looking at i mean it's very, it's very similar but we've already got we've got a small commercial team who look at that for us anyway but the sponsorship again that was something for uh, a lot you know the, the 25 year vision you know, a lot a lot of it you you, you, you can you can mirror birmingham nottingham mm -hmm. very much very much the same you, can. you know it, it's it's very similar what you know what, what the presentation that's uh we, we just had it's you know it, it could be the same presentation in some ways to to, uh, to Bir you know, but birmingham, birmingham really yeah, yeah i think the mirror would, would deliver it very differently <laughs> <laughs> well maybe maybe not I, I don't know but yeah yeah but yeah, it was, it was a good presentation. Thank Definitely. you. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Thank um, uh, so next question was from Stuart in Derby, just asking how the bigger heritage sites like Woolerton and the Castle fit into the FPA work than Adrian? Um, they kind of do and don't. Uh, the, the Castle very much is a trust on its own now um, and, and is being run independently. Um, Woolerton and Newark, uh, Newstead are um, part of it in terms of um, uh, being kept informed with uh, what we're doing, but we're we're definitely just sticking to the the sites that are managed by the the parks service um, for the work that we're doing. Okay, okay. And uh, final question, I think. So Liz was asking, um, understanding a bit how the work from not just Nottingham but the other pilots will be disseminated into the project. I mean, one of the questions I was going to ask was about probably the scale of what you've run through and. In reality, with nine months to go, is that is that possible? It, do, does it have an end, or actually, will the end date be just a point in time, and a lot of this carries on? And also about the other pilots, I understand that there aren't eight anymore. Is that correct? That they haven't all made it through the midpoint review? Uh, yes, that is correct. Bristol um, didn't make it through their midpoint review, um, so um, uh, they they've. I think they had a change in. Um, political uh, leadership and basically um, decided it wasn't for them. I think the outcomes that the FPA want and what Bristol, where Bristol wants to go um, didn't gel. So they've, um, they've not got through. Um, yes, the, I mean, the strategy will be, we, we do understand nine months isn't very long to do a lot of this work and a lot of the partnership working especially will have to, will carry on afterwards because it's not going to happen between now and uh, now and the end of the month. We do hope that we will have a, a strategy ready that if things aren't, um, uh, you know, literally underway that the strategy will align how we do move forward over the next few years. So there'll be some short term um, uh, actions in the strategy that get us through the next year um, to keep the, the understanding and work going to make sure that that we continue to get um, to the outcomes that we're looking for. Um, and the FPA are doing a lot of work around gathering case studies and toolkits and uh, learning. Um, because part of their role moving on after next March is, um, I understand, to have a phase two. Um, so they'll be putting out um, uh, um, some um, funding uh, opportunities for, for other cities and I presume towns and counties to, to apply to be their phase two. Um, but also uh, they'll be doing a lot of work with um, individual local authorities and that to share the learning um, so that other authorities can can um, take on some of this work that they're interested in. So, for example, a lot of good work done around volunteering. Um, there's a lot of good work done about um, setting up charitable foundations and everything. So if local authorities or you know people come to them to say, how do we do that? They have got a lot of information that they'll be able to help um, help with to, to help people um, look at um, doing that in their areas. Great. OK, I mean, I think the thing we recognise is that clearly most organisations around the, the virtual room wouldn't have the capacity to be pushing on all of these things at once in the way the FPA projects are, hence it being funded. But there'll be certain elements like volunteering that people want yeah. to learn from. Um, and I guess, you know, speaking on behalf of myself, Alison and Liz and the rest of the trustees, it's something that the Midlands Forum would like to, to help disseminate that learning across our members so that we've all got benefits from these projects, really. So Yeah, yeah I'll pass that on and then, yeah, we'll get a dialogue going. 
Great. OK, uh, great. Thank you everyone for your questions. Thanks, Adrian, for your time today. Um, you. So our next agenda item, let me just get back to my screen. Um, we originally had in an update from Paul Rabbits on the Parks Management Forum. Uh, as I mentioned, unfortunately, Paul is off sick at the moment, so couldn't attend today. Um, I think the main piece of update that I know is that they are now becoming or have become the Parks Management Association. Uh, I'm sure it's something Paul wants to talk to us about, what they've been up to, what they've done with their initial cohort of members and their initial membership fees um, and, and where they're going next. And, in, and a, a bit of a push on kind of what the forum or the association, I should say, can do for, for the sector, really. Um, so we'll try and get Paul back at our next um, webinar. Hopefully we can slot him in on the on 22nd of July with a bit of luck. So, um, so part two is going to be our um, sort of round the table updates from people. It'd be great if people can stay for that. Just what makes it really useful in terms of that chat about hot topics and also an update we're going to have from Chris about what's going on with government in parks world, I should say. Too big a topic otherwise. Uh, but we'll have a 15 minute break now. Um, so if we come back at 10 past three uh, and we'll start our round table session then. So see you all in 15 minutes. Go and, go and get the kettle on. Cheers. <laughs>